span to run a marathon in under two hours. He just has the absolutely efficient, perfect form for a marathoner. You say only the disciplined are free in life. If you are undisciplined, you are a slave to your moods. You are a slave to your passions. You are not limited at all. The only limitation that you have is in our minds. Let us dare to dream and dare to try. If I had to ask you, Elliot Kipchoge, why do you run? The only place where freedom is, is in running. So if you are not running, we're a prison. He finished in 10th place in this year's Tokyo Marathon, which is the lowest that he has ever finished in a marathon. So personally, I cannot succeed as far as Tokyo Marathon is concerned. I feel that uh, I was really disappointed to train for four or five months without getting the real south. But that's not the end of the life. I need to think big. No one has ever won three gold medals in a row when it comes to the marathon. What are you aiming for in this Olympics? Back to back to back. Love. This is the Love Podcast. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode. Today, arguably, one of our biggest guests so far, Elliot Kipchoge. Perhaps the best marathon runner of all time, multiple Olympic gold medalist, and the only man in the world to run a marathon under two hours. Elliot, thanks so much for being with us here today. Thank you very much and welcome to this podcast. Yeah, how, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm in Kenya and uh, uh, enjoying the, the, the sunshine here. That's great. It's, it's good to hear. I mean, yes. uh, we were just discussing before the interview as well, but uh, for those listening, you know, I'm also in, enjoying the, the sun here in Malta. So um, I think there's something about the sun to, that really boosts boosts the mood. Do you find it, do you find it easier kind of running uh, when it's sunny or do you prefer cloudy days? Uh, I prefer cloudy days. You know, uh, sun actually in, uh, it trains a lot, uh, especially with hydration. It's a lot of hydration, but uh, cloudy actually is, uh, you can enjoy the run, you can actually uh, push your body to the, to the limits. And, you know, mm-hmm. yes, mm-hmm. That, that's why I like the cloudy days. No, I get that. I was training for, um, so actually... It's funny that we're interviewing you now because yesterday I found out um, I couldn't do the Paris Marathon, not the Olympic one. I was training um, and I've injured my knee and I so I can't do it. But the, it's actually true. You wake up and it's a cloudy day and it seems, at least for me, it seems really depressing. Um, but you end up running and you actually feel much better by the time you get going because you heat up. Um, so you end up feeling at like the right temperature. But anyway, before we get into the proper questions for you, Elliot, we have a question that we have for every guest, um, which you actually find out a lot about, about the person. And that question is, what's your favorite bread? Because with a loaf podcast, what's your favorite bread? Uh, my favorite bread is, uh, bread is, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's a Kenyan bread. We are making with the, with the local weed and mm. yeah, just the white bread. Do you, do you eat it on its own or with like oil or um, salad or just on its own? Yeah. Uh, you know, in Kenya, we eat uh, bread uh, with tea. With tea? Ah, nice, yes. nice, nice. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you'd, you'd be surprised how many people, for example, some people bake their own bread. Some people, a lot of people eat sourdough, especially the ones from London. But it's good to, to hear something a bit, you know, closer to, closer to home. Uh, our bread in Kenya is, uh, you know, we, we just, we pack up with a normal bread, white bread, we take with tea, we actually uh, 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 eat with machari, eat with pata. Cool, cool. So, um, yeah, of, of obviously coming back to your, um, coming back to Kenya and your um, your Kenyan roots, you're obviously from the Kalenjin tribe where so many uh, elite runners actually come from that tribe. And I was wondering, basically, what what, you, what do you think is unique about the the Kalenjin tribe that a kind of seems to you know birth all these amazing runners and and also culturally, what, what do you think makes it so special? Uh, I don't think it's, uh, there is a special or or, or actually a rockatan which makes Kalenjin run very fast. I think fast is that uh, they have the basic actually that the the basic is is good for running. Secondly, is that uh, the topography, that's the environment in, in Rift Valley where Kalenjin is reciting, actually is conducive for running, especially with altitude. And the purple mm. actually is, 
all the collagen is in their minds. Running is actually in their minds. I think what drives the the all the collagen is is mind. That's uh, you know, if any sport actually is in the mind, then uh, uh, you can go very fast. It's like in in Kenya, running is the key. Yeah, I guess. Um, good thing you weren't in the Maasai because you would have been a world record jumper, not a world record runner, right? Uh, yes, I I, I I think the Maasai is actually is uh, good in jumping. Good in traveling and you know, actually throwing the arrows, and you know, I, I think if one day we can make uh, masses to to be serious enough on on, on sport, then they, they, they can get a lot of medals and, and even break the world mm. records on 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 traveling and uh, and high jump. And above all, even the, 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 the long jump and triple jump because they like jumping. It's the only mm. thing is to introduce to them the 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 the, the, the basics of uh, of the sport. Yeah, you're right. Um... So you also ha- you have your coach, uh, Patrick Sang, who you grew up with. Um, and it's really cool that you've kept the same kind of coach from beginning and onwards as you progress in your career. What's been, where's the success with the relationship with you with Patrick Sang? Because usually people would like take a coach. It's kind of their first coach. And they're like, oh, okay, you know, this is uh, in a relaxed way. And once you get professional, you move on. But Patrick has been like a cornerstone of your success. What's the success in your relationship and why is, uh, why is Patrick such a good coach? Uh, the real success actually is, uh, is listening. We call it empathic listening. I listen enough to what Patrick is saying. Uh, uh, I believe and trust uh, uh, that uh, what uh, Patrick carries in his mind is what I believe. You know, they always say that uh, if you are a CEO of a company, you need to tell your employees what you believe. And if you tell all the employees actually what you believe, then employees will walk by the sweat, by blood, and by tears to make sure that the company actually grows. When I, on my side, myself, is that uh, I believe uh, 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 the beliefs for Patrick is working hard, being consistent, being trustworthy, and value-oriented uh, person, which I believe myself that uh, I have the right values to move on in sport. I am trusting, you know, enough as far as uh, what Patrick is giving me uh, with the program and advice is actually that uh, he gives me. I'm trying to be consistent in training. I am working as hard as possible to make sure that uh, I, I, I complete uh, what I am doing in, in, in a good way, in an easy way, and in a lovely way. And that's what that made us to stick for the last 20 years. Uh, and uh, I, I think if, if the value if the values actually has make us to stay for 21 years, then I don't think anything else can break us. Yeah, I, th- I think, um, and this is something that we wanted to talk quite a lot about, this, this idea of the underlying values of 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 you as a as a person. And I think that drives that drives your success so much. And I, I wanted to to read out for our listeners uh, one of one of your quotes, which I found really, really powerful while while doing the research. Uh, and you you say only the disciplined are free in life. If you are undisciplined, you are a slave to your moods. You are a slave to your passions. I was I was wondering if you could maybe expand on that a little bit, and 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 for our listeners, kind of give give a message of motivation there. As uh, only the disciplined ones are free in life, and those who are actually not disciplined are 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 actually prisoners or slaves of their passions. And you know what I'm trying to say is that. Uh, if you are self-disciplined, and you know the meaning of self-discipline is sacrificial of your personal pleasures and passions. If you sacrifice what you think actually you should be doing, and you know you walk with that self-discipline all the time, then there is no need for you to think outside the land. You only wake up, do the right things at the right time. And and you know, if if if, if you make it as an habit and cause all, all, all small, small things every day, then it will be actually uh, 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 your lifestyle. And the moment it comes, uh, it, it becomes your lifestyle, then you are, you, you are now free in life because you, you can't explain to anybody that uh, this is my way. They know by themselves that that's the way of that person. And that person actually need to live that way. And that way actually can lead you to success. And many people can actually decide themselves, be self-disciplined, Get self discipline actually as a, a lifestyle in their lives. They can wake up with it, walk with it, sleep with it. And you know that, that that's the way. That's the only way to live. 
That's amazing. I've heard you on another podcast talk about um, vitamin N, yes. which is obviously, um, I'll, let, I'll let you explain in a second, but roughly vitamin N is vitamin no. Um, saying no to parties, mm-hmm. saying no to going out, saying no to staying on your phone when you should be sleeping. So the, the, the way I want to make the question new is to ask you, how would you instill vitamin N in your kids? Which I think is the important question because that's how would you get people to be disciplined that aren't you? What do you do to, to, to get vitamin N going? I, I always say that uh, vitamin N is the courage to say no. And you know, all the things that I'm saying, I'm starting with myself and starting with my kids. That's my family. I will give you an example that uh, because I normally walk with my kids to supermarkets and if mm-hmm. my kids are going to demand that something that's not in our budget, I'll automatically say no. This is for another time. And a, a kid actually can be annoyed immediately, but I'm the parent. I have the courage to tell my kid this is not possible. And at the end of it, uh, my, my kid will accept, will move on because I'm their father. And their father is saying no to, to, to buying sweets today. Next time we'll buy sweets. That's an example of myself. I'm, that's an example of instilling the vitamin N to my, to, 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 to my kids. You know, even where I, I always explain to them that if you don't like something, say no. And don't explain about saying no. Just say no. That's enough. I'm not working on this. I'm turned like this. And that's enough. Be happy. Move on. And people actually will recognize you by your stand. You know, what we need in this world is standing by what, by, by what you are doing at the same time what you are saying. So personally, I stand on what I'm doing and what I'm saying. And I started, they say charity begins at home. So I started myself with my family, especially my kids. And moving out, outside the door to tell the general community, let us have it. I mean, and is that I have uh, actually such enough. I have actually uh, uh, met my kids as an example. And actually they have succeeded in, in accepting and knowing that uh, if it's no, it's no. And you know, not every day is yes, yes, yes. And not every day is no, no, no. But the good thing is to have courage to say no. Yeah, I think I, I really like that vitamin N is, you know, it's, it's one word, it's powerful. And it, in some ways it's, it's simple and it kind of bypasses nowadays. There's, there's so much rhetoric around how to live the most fulfilled life. And it can get a little bit confusing and complicated, but the, the idea of vitamin N for me is, is really powerful because it, it really breaks down, breaks everything down into one single word, you know, the ability to say no. And, and, and coming from that, I was wondering why do you think nowadays modern modern life, modern young people as well, why do you think they might struggle a little bit with determination and grit? What do you think that comes down to? Uh, the, modern, the, modern, the modern generation actually will struggle. The reason number one is that they want their lives to be, uh, get a good life very fast. And you know, life is not a one night event. You cannot actually sleep and wake up when your life actually is different. You know, I'll give you an example, doctor. If you go to the gymnasium, if you walk for 10 hours at the gym, you cannot get a good fit and actually energetic muscles. But if you go to the gymnasium for six months, you will be fit, you will get good muscles, which can actually drive you as, as the fittest human being. It's like life. So I'm, tr- I'm, t- I'm telling actually this new generation, the modern generation that... Uh, Life is not a one night event. Life is actually slowly by slowly. Life actually is, uh, is, 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 we take baby steps as far, in order for us to grow in life and enjoy life. So an example is the gymnasium. If you go for 10 hours and you expect to have a good muscles and be fit enough, that's not actually, that, it, cannot, it, it cannot happen. But if you go to the gymnasium for six months, you will be fit. You will, you will actually uh, 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 get great muscles. So it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a symbol, but it's art, but it needs those people who understand, you know, go actually as far as in, in, in baby steps, understand the, 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 the road. You know, the road is not, it's not always smooth. The road has a lot of pumps. The road has uh, potholes on the way. You can step, 
it's like when you are driving, you can you can actually get puncture on on the way, but life must continue. You should wake up, uh, uh, make sure that your vehicle is going is going on well, and move on. I think it's such a you're right. It's such a modern thing of like um, you just want the reward without the work, but actually, the work is kind of what makes the reward amazing. You train. Obviously, I failed the marathon because I, I'm injured. But the, what I was experiencing is you train super hard and you put in all the work. And then the actual race day is, is more like a celebration because you put in so much work. But if you showed up on the day, no training to do a marathon, um, even if you were fast enough, even if you could run far enough without the training, the, it, 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 you wouldn't get the same, I think, like reward out of it. Um, as you would with all the training and all the months and all the hard work put in. Um, and I think that's like, it's the same with like get rich quick schemes that you have on the internet. Everybody just wants the thing, um, straight away, but you intrinsically love running. And I want to run, I want to read another quote to you if that's okay. Um, from you, which I love from another interview, we need to live in harmony. We need to live in peace. And that's what I'm actually working for. Um, can you tell us about that quote and about why you run and how you're helping to create that peace through what you're doing? Yeah, I say it, uh, you need to live in harmony. You need to live in peace in order for you to be successful, enjoy running and enjoy life. What I mean is this, that if your mind actually is in peace and your environment actually is in harmony, then it gives you the good and, you know, the best time to train to relax, to enjoy life with the family, and to actually put on the whole work. If there is no harmony in your life, if there is no peace in your life, you cannot do anything at all. You cannot even finish your training because your mind is full. Your mind is not in a peace way, in a, in a peaceful uh, 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 manner, whereby you can think and you know do the training the way you want in a in a in a in a, in a, in a enjoyable way. And if you are not in harmony with people, if you are not in harmony with yourself, with the family, and you know, with all sorts of uh, and, uh, people surrounding you and, and the general environment, then you cannot move. You can't even actually m- make one step. So the cool thing is that you walk fast with your, with your peace surround about it. You make your surrounding peaceful. You make all your teammates actually to, to, to talk in a peaceful way. You create that harmony in your environment and you are ready to call. Yeah, I mean, just to, to bring it back, because I, I really want to kind of ask in a really straightforward way and, and for our listeners. And I think I think a clear answer here might be might be quite quite insightful um, for those listening. If I had to ask you, Elliot Kipchoge, why do you run? Or what would you tell me? Oh, I run because running is life. What I mean is this. I run first is that uh, to make myself uh, held and fit, to make my mind actually think in a good way, to make my body actually fit and allow me to sleep and hit uh, 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 in a, in a, in, in actually in a good way. Above all is that uh, running actually has exposed myself that uh, I can inspire someone around the world to run and enjoy life. And that's why I always say, let us make this world a running world. And if all of us, we can make this world a running world, then it will be a better world, a united world, and a peaceful world. Mm, what do you think the average person um like just anybody who hasn't run before or everybody runs a little, but somebody who's not getting into running, what do you think they, that one person can get from beginning to run as well? Even if it's not as far, even if it's not as fast, what do you think somebody, what do you think we can gain from running? I always say the only place where freedom is, is in running. So if you are not running, we are a prisoner. Mm. Wow. I mean, what, what, what kind of, what kind of, that doesn't need to be, doesn't need to be these long distances. That is, that's part of my question. Doesn't need to be 
timed or or is like kind of a, a run in the park is that is that enough would you say to an average person it does mean whether you run long or short but get out of your door get mm. shoes wear your shoes put on your shoes put on your hat there run for 40 minutes one hour you enjoy that freedom of quality during running get those ideas which are coming in and put in paper and you know if you get out of your door and run that's how to enjoy life it's not about running for 2 hours 3 hours 5 hours mm. or running a marathon it's about getting out of your door and run just get them getting out of the door and and just run run for 40 minutes one hour and you feel that uh, that freedom you feel that freedom actually in running both in your body mm. and in your mind i think running is one of those things where it takes a second you have to get the fitness to be able to enjoy the run because at the beginning what you're actually doing is suffering um like when you first if you're not if you're unfit for example you start running and you feel is very difficult but once you start to get into a rhythm and you can run 5 kilometers for example even without without worrying um it feels it feels amazing and it and 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 it feels like you're free um yeah so so i guess that's that's kind of what the the normal person can get before they try running absolutely i i mean i i would say i would say though just to just to push back on ollie and, and get your opinion there would do you think it maybe suffering in running is is a necessary part of it do you think it's good to suffer a little bit it, it's a uh, pain and suffering actually are two crucial or important actually uh, uh, values you know mm. we need to know and respect pain we need to have ways of nurturing pain you know pain is part of life pain is part of running and if you can nurture that pain respect that pain then you are ready to go you are ready to run for long you know we don't say we don't we don't uh, we don't actually accuse and say no it's painful or we suffer no that suffering is what makes you a person that suffering yeah. is what makes you a human being anybody running can solve any problem anywhere in any section in any profession at all yeah i mean i don't know if you're um, familiar with david goggins do you have you have you heard of him you know No David Goggins anyway he's um he's a runner uh, he's not not really olympic runner but um he's also kind of of this mentality that that running's like a good way to kind of deal um deal with pain deal with suffering and also kind of like diving head first into it i guess coming from that do you see sometimes um running as as also a really good antidote to bad mental health nowadays in 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 2024 where mental health is 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 really spoken about and there seems to be this issue with people being depressed and stuff um do you, do you think running is a good kind of cure for that running actually is the medicine you know it's running cures every disease you know i always say running is like movement I always say mm-hmm. let us move and you know i'll give you an example if you can make movement a bit or if you can bottle if you put actually if you can bottle movement then you'll be the richest person in this world if any human being can bottle movement one day that that 500 uh, milliliters of actually bottled movement will be sold uh, uh, at actually at the cost of a trillion dollar so if you happen to to, to, wow. bot- to bottle it let us bottle it and sell will be the richest people in this world so running is the cure for any disease they say if you feel actually stressed get out of your door and run and you'll actually come back when you are when you are free so i wanted to talk about in terms of helping people in general um like you were talking about running being the medicine um running is also needs the clean fresh air and i haven't seen you talk about it on a podcast before could you tell us a little bit about uh, the eliad kipchoge foundation what you're doing for the climate and also what you're doing uh, for the kids uh eluk yoga foundation actually is uh, i think it's the right foundation for this wall because we are dealing with uh, with three things we are dealing with the conservation of the environment education and health which run and cover the all three aspects on conservation actually we are top the forests we plant trees and actually advocate 
make uh, uh, advocate to make this wall a green wall. And we always say, if our wall is green, then our water is blue. And we are telling everybody, in your anniversary, in your party, in your wedding day, in your anything that actually we call anniversary, let us not actually celebrate by organizing big parties. Let us plan, let us plan trees. If you are 20 years old, instead of actually going around for a trip because it's, it's your party, plan 20 trees. If you are actually eight years old, plan 80 trees. And you know, the world is about 6 billion people. And everybody, in all these 6 billion people, everybody has his own, his or her own party. But that, if all of us can plant trees, we can make this planet green in only one year. Only one year. If all of us can actually understand each other, respect each other, and put everything in practice. That's what my foundation is advocating as far as conservation is concerned. On education, we build libraries. We have started with one. I, I, and uh, my, my mind actually and, um, and, and about the foundation is building another for the six libraries across Kenya. And if all goes well, I want to build a library in every public primary and secondary school in Kenya and, uh, and maybe extend to East Africa. And, you know, I value education because education is what takes you places. Education actually is what uh, keeps you the that like run very fast, keeps you the that, that, that hand to actually walk in everywhere you are doing. That's the second actually aspect. That, that aspect is hard. I am advocating actually to every citizen in our country, in continent in Africa, in the whole world to make running a lifestyle. And, you know, making running a lifestyle, that's been held. I always tell people, if you get out of your door and run for 40 minutes, it's like actually kicking away the doctor. You will no longer buy fruits actually every day. You know, uh, one apple costs actually about $1. And if you run, you will no longer actually... Uh, 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 buying a lot of things to make you health, you'll become health direct. You'll not be visiting doctors all the, all the, all the time because actually it, 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 reduces, it, it reduces expense. So let us run in order for, to make this world and ourselves health. Let us actually run and inject education into the whole our citizens. And that's what I'm doing by building libraries and kindergartens in this country. And above all, let us make this country, at, at this world a green wall. And that's why I'm advocating that in any anniversary, be the party, any anniversary, let us plant trees. And if you plant trees, we'll make this world a green world. You know, we're no longer organizing meetings every now and then about an annual actually talking about the environment. We'll plant the trees across the world only in one year and we are done. It's only t- time to take care of. Yeah, I, um, I think this is a good segue into your Ineos run. So for those who, who don't know, um, for those listening, Eli Kipchoge, you ran a marathon under two hours. And it, I mean, it's an extraordinary feat. And I was wondering, I mean, you've spoken before about it in, in other podcasts, you know, what, what you're trying to achieve um, with it to, to inspire people, but specifically for young people, because Ollie and I, you know, we're, we're still 20 and, and we're coming up to be the next generation of people on planet Earth. What is your really message to young people and, and how do you think your running and, for example, your Ineos one hour, 59 minute run can contributes to, to, to making this world a better place? Uh, first and foremost is that I dedicated uh, Ineos 159 challenge to the whole world, to the next generation, the present generation and the whole generation. That's why I always say no human is limited. What I mean is this. It's not about running. It's about life. It's about the professions that, uh, it's about those journalists. It's about those teachers. It's about those engineers. It's about those architects, the businessmen, the, 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 the leaders, that you are not limited at all. You can go and surpass that leadership and provide the greater leadership you n- n- nobody can think of. You can actually teach the children in a good way and build a lot of schools if you are a teacher. You can, you can actually start a lot of factories if you are engineers. And, you know, you are not limited at all. The only thing is that the limitation that we have is in our minds. So let us remove the limitations, move on, 
enjoy this world. Let us actually fight for this world because it belongs to all of us. I always tell people, this world belongs to all of us. Nobody is owning it. So we are not limited at all. Let us conserve it. Let us fight uh, this in, in this world with uh, the right values. Let us inject ourselves with the right values and, you know, move on. Any profession, make sure you bring change. Change, change, change. And that's what I mean by no human is limited. With the next generation, let us think and ask yourself, how will the world look like in the next 20 years? Mm-hmm. And because we are, we are not limited, we'll, we'll have ideas actually to make this world a better world. I think that's what's um, really powerful about your message is um, most of the time you look at a, 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 an elite athlete like yourself and the classic reaction from somebody on the couch is, oh, well, they're just not like me. Oh, they're just, you know, they're different. They're made different. Um, but with you, I think I've heard that when you began, obviously you ran to school, but when you began training for running, you felt that you actually weren't particularly fast compared to the others, which I think is almost like the most important part of the whole thing is, is now you're Elliot Kipchoge and before you were just Elliot Kipchoge and you weren't that fast, but you kept trading, you kept believing and you didn't let yourself be limited. So what, what I'd ask is, when did you start to believe um, that you could do something with running from your training and that something was going to happen despite at the beginning not feeling as most people do when they begin anything new, despite not feeling like you're the best at the beginning? Uh, you know, when I was in school, actually, I used to, to, to run, but become, actually become uh, victorious, uh, you know, beating everybody. But I didn't know that uh, I can run and I knew uh, to this level. Uh, after school, then I, I, I my, my coach is my neighbor. I always see him training around. Then I ask myself one day, why don't I train and start actually to run in a professional way to, to go to Europe and actually uh, see whether I can actually compete with other people. I start training. They, uh, he, I approached him. He gave me the program. I trained, and that's who I am now. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, with anybody who feels that he or she can do anything, give it a try. Give it a try. Do it. And you realize that you can do it. So let us not actually have a dream that uh, we cannot dare to try. Let us dare to dream and dare to try. And you'll actually realize that uh, you can do better. You can do wonders in this world. Yeah, I mean, there was a point, as far as I'm aware, where you, you had a bit of a low point in your athletics career, if I'm correct. And, and that's kind of what led to you switching to to running the marathon, switching to running marathon. How significant was this change in your life? Obviously now you, uh, you've, you've broken records in marathon running and, and, and um, you get, for me at least, the best. How significant was that moment when you switched to marathon running? Uh, in, in 2012, I missed your slot to London Olympics. And you know, I ran 5,000 meters and 3,000 meters uh, for 10 years. And, you know, I was successful. I did not miss any championship for 10 years. Beat Commonwealth, beat Olympics, beat World Championships for 10 years. 2012, I missed a slot. And then I make a decision that uh, we, I came back, we sit on the table with the management and the coach that uh, now I missed a slot. What will happen? Then uh, uh, the, the aspect of making transition to the road came in and I took it. Let me actually uh, leave track and field. Let me transfer and, tr- and transit to the road. Running 10K, 15K, half marathon, and, and finally actually graduating to the marathon. And, you know, I make a firm decision, no retreat, no surrender at all. Let us move on. I move in one faith uh, and, you know, and see actually focus on the, on the trophy focus on the call that I said. And that's who I am now. Like I said earlier, people often have the thing of, um, oh, well, they're not quite like me. This elite athlete, you, for example, oh, well, they're different. They're made, they're made better. And like, like we just talked about, you've had that low point. You've had that low point more than once. Um, 
and, and you're human like the rest of us. Um, so to ask for the humans, um, an advice, which I don't think you've talked about much before, if you were starting from point zero and you'd never run a day in your life and you wanted to run a marathon from a training perspective, not from a mindset perspective, what would you tell somebody to do? Um, and how would you tell them to train for their first marathon? Uh, for actually the, the raw person, the new person in running, the new person in marathon, the new person in road races, is that uh, my best advice is just to start to run. Don't actually uh, confuse yourselves by doing other things. Just wake up, accept to say I'm running, just run. You know, every day will change. If you run today, three kilometers, tomorrow you'll run three, the next day you'll run five, and you know you are growing every day, every day. Every day. So my best advice, get good shoes, good hot tire, get out of your door and run. You realize a lot, a lot will change. You will enjoy a lot. You will actually uh, have different mindset on running if you start running. Yeah, I think I think it's definitely something that everyone should be doing and and. I should be doing more of and um and you're you're a great role model and you've achieved so much in your career so I wanted to to shift the conversation now as we kind of come towards the end of our conversation shift shift the conversation to the present you know to the now and your career right now you recently ran in Tokyo and didn't get the results that you necessarily wanted I was wondering what are your plans for the future now? How are you expecting to bounce back from that? What can you learn from the 2024 Tokyo run? Uh, I've learned that uh, uh, you can train in a good way, be in a good shape, but uh, putting in practice, actually, somebody will, something actually will, will, will remain unlocked and, you know, disappointments will come in. But, you know, they always say a coin has two sides, but in life, that's three sides. That's thinking big. So I personally, I did not succeed as far as uh, um, Tokyo Marathon is concerned. I feel that uh, I was really disappointed to train for four or five months without getting the real results. But that's not the end of the life. I need to think big. I need to come back to Kenya, share, put in the table with, uh, with, with, with my right system, move on, prepare for Olympics, try to fight again for the, for, 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 for the honors in Olympic Games. And, you know, my aim is to, 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 to inspire as many people as, as I can, you know, in order. I, that's why I always say I want to make this world a running world. It's no longer about anything else. It's about inspiration. If all of us, if tomorrow you can tell me the whole world has accepted to be a running world, I'll retire. One of the things often that's talked about with you in running is, and this shows in the Tokyo Marathon, um, is a very perceptive runner of how you're feeling and how to adjust at different points in the race. For example, if you're slightly off kilter, off to the side. Um, and in the Tokyo Marathon, your first half um, was your like first split was faster and then you adjusted and still managed to get a really good finish, even though um, it seems like you were struggling um, at some point. So why do you think you had to adjust? Uh, what do you think went wrong at a certain point and how, how can we make it better in the future? Uh, but my, my body actually did not respond after halfway. And the only mm -hmm. way actually was to, 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 to concentrate purely and put my mind on actually crossing the finishing line to show people that uh, you can have a bad day, you can have a pain as you feel, you, the body can refuse actually to react, can, something can, can remain unlocked, but you can still push yourselves, you know, to show that uh, human body can be pushed to, to, to the limits all the time. And, you know, even if you don't actually, if you don't actually uh, be on your right, uh, on your on your right position, but still push. So I changed my mind to just run in a comfortable pace and make sure that I finish the, in good time, not the position, but make sure I cross the finishing line. And, you know, and, 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 and uh, the, 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 the going out of the finishing line actually, it was a registration of finishing the marathon and, and you know, uh, uh, showing that I have run uh, uh, over 20 marathons. Yeah. And, um, and speaking of kind of good finishes in a marathon, I think it's important now 
as we as we close off to to look to the 2024 Olympics, which are coming back. And correct me if I'm wrong, no one has ever won three gold medals in a row when it comes to the marathon. What are you aiming for in this Olympics? I'm aiming for that to win for three gold medals consecutively, back to back to back. I think uh, I, that's what is in my mind. I'll try my best to push myself. I'll try my best to to, to make sure I get uh, uh, that medal to win three times to inspire people and tell the next generation that uh, longevity is the key and you can still actually uh, 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 make a call and actually pursue that call and make that call happen. That's what is in my mind. Yeah, I mean, we're really, we're really looking forward to your performance at the Olympics. And, um, you know, we also wanted to say huge thank you for joining us today. And we're wishing you the best of luck for the Olympics. Do you have any concluding thoughts for our listeners and for me and Oli? Uh, for our listeners, actually, please enjoy this podcast. Let us be positive in life. You know, uh, this world belongs to all of us. Everybody will be, who, who is actually going to listen to this podcast, please. Help me by making this wall a running wall. To the two of you, Akele Lucas and Holly, uh, uh, let us continue uh, uh, with uh, uh, interaction to many people, sell the, the sport in this country, in this world. And, you know, sport is, uh, is a universal profession whereby it can make people to meet together, to think together and enjoy life. As I say, let us tell people that where there is freedom is only in running. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And um, I really resonate with your message about making the world a running world. I've already started a little bit. Hopefully soon, Lucas will start. Um, hopefully he'll, he'll get a little bit of running in as well. But, Lucas um, is in Malta. I, 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 I think that island is good for running. He can start tomorrow. Yeah, it is. Mm. It is, it is, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful island. I've been once. Yes. But um, well, thank you so much, Elliot. Asante sana. Um, it's you. been a pleasure. And um, this is the Loaf Podcast signing off with Elliot Kipchoge. Hey guys, if you enjoyed that, please make sure to drop a like down below. If you want to see more content from the Loaf Podcast, you can click right over here to check out our video with athlete Lindsay Vaughn, the best female skier of all time. This has been the Loaf Podcast interviewing Elliot Kipchoge.